Welcome to the Bar for Bar podcast. This week, I'm going to be discussing why Run the Jewels works and why rapper and producer collaborations are important. Before I get into that, though, uh, I want to remind everyone that I'm going to continue putting links in the description of places where you can sign petitions and to donate. Every little bit helps, and do what you can, please, because change needs to happen. Something needs to be done. (laughs) Anything helps. All right, well, now let's get into the actual topic. I promise that this is the last time I'm going to talk about Run the Jewels before I do the actual review. The review is coming on Wednesday, so relax. So, why does Run the Jewels work so well? In my opinion, it's because Killer Mike and LP are a really good duo, but also because you have LP, who... El El Producto... He's he's the only one really doing production on Run the Jewels. He does have help from outside sources every once in a while, but the majority of the albums are all produced by him. Um, Obviously, he also raps on it, uh, as well as Killer Mike. But this is really more focused on the producer, I believe. So... Reason being, when you have a producer and a rapper working so closely together, they, one, they get really close, like, so they know each other pretty well, but also there tends to be a better overall product out of it. For example, with Run the Jewels, you're going to get a pretty consistent sound throughout each project, and that even goes for the, um... The album that Killer Mike did back in 2012, Rap Music, which was fully produced by LP. The entire project is going to be very consistent all the way through. So you don't have to be scratching your head as to why is this song here? Why It sounds so different. Um, also, when you have someone working, so, like a producer working so closely to a rapper... The producer usually has in their mind what sort of song that's going to come out of it. So when you have them in the same room together, or at least communicating properly, the rapper's typically going to go for what the producer has in mind. Obviously, that's not always the case because you have so many producers out there who just stand beats wherever they can, and they don't really get the chance to communicate with the rapper so the rapper just kind of does whatever they feel is right on that track and that's fine you usually do get good music out of that as well but i feel like the best outcome is always when you have the two working together so sticking with run the jewels outside of them both rapping i mean like i mentioned lp is the producer You have both of them working so closely together for the past eight years. So LP knows what sort of beats work well for both of them. Uh, Both himself and Killer Mike, that is. So that's why they always sound so good on whatever production there is. And personally, I... I'm the type of person that really likes listening to albums all the way through rather than listening to individual songs. I do that as well, but that's less common for me. Um, Obviously, I'll throw on just a random playlist of songs every once in a while. I even have a playlist that I've kind of been neglecting that's full of music I enjoy from this year so far. But... That's mostly just as a reminder for me to see what albums I like, because so much comes out, and I try to listen to everything that comes out, or at least most things that come out. So, you know, it's, for me, individual songs are more just like, oh, I really like this song, and it reminds me of this album. Now, with that said, 
That doesn't mean I dislike albums with multiple producers, because you can totally get albums that sound good and consistent with multiple producers. But before I get into that, I'm going to go through a few other examples of rapper-producer combos that just work really well. Um, other than Run the Jewels, which I've already discussed at length. Uh, Mad Lib and Freddie Gibbs. They, so, obviously, Pinata and Bandana are two of my favorite albums. But they work so well because Mad Lib just, you know, he he's crazy. <laughs> he's so weird and out there, and he has such a wide variety of beats. But Freddie Gibbs has a good ear for beats. And although they're both collaborating, kind of still comes down to them agreeing on individual songs. So that's why... It kind of does depend on the rapper, too, to find a track that they like and help make the song. Um, Because essentially what they end up being is an instrument. And if they don't fit the song well, they're, you know, the song's not going to do as well. And I think that's why producers also keep in mind what sort of rap style that they want on this track or on a particular track. Because in the end, it, like they still have to work on it. Um, they're not always the guys that mix and master everything, but they do have to keep in mind what they, what sort of sound they want from the finished product. Uh, but with Mad Libs and Freddie Gibbs album or Mad Gibbs, let's just keep it at that. Their projects are so consistent. They. Like, the beats don't always flow too well, but that's kind of a Mad Lib thing. Like, Mad Lib always throws in these weird, like, outros to the tracks and just random intros, skits here and there. And although that doesn't always make sense if you were not accustomed to it, like, you could be listening to Bandana and you have the intro track, Obrigado, and then it just kind of shifts into the next track, which I don't remember now. And to new listeners to Mad Lib's production style, that just seems so off the wall and so strange. But it makes sense when you listen to the rest of the album, because that's something that he keeps consistent. Like, he'll throw in these random beats, like, on the end of Giannis, he has the sample which he was taking throughout the whole track and just plays the rest of the sample. And at first you might be like, why the hell is this man playing Bollywood music? But then you realize, oh, he's just playing the rest of the sample. <laughs> it's just cool, like, how... Like, the consistency varies. Like, it doesn't have to be the same sound all the way through. They can keep a consistency with the style that they're going for. And that's pretty stylistic of Mad Lib. Um, another major one to really talk about is The Alchemist. I mean, this year alone, like, he's released three collaborative projects that sound consistent all the way through. The most recent one being Alfredo. Um, but he also dropped Lulu and The Price of Tea in China earlier this year. But anytime The Alchemist is on a... Or works on a collaborative album. One, the project is short. So that allows for the project to stay consistent. But two, the beat selection and just how... Like the outcome of the album is so good. <laughs> Um, like the Alchemist is, I mean, he obviously can do a wide variety of beats and he's done one-off tracks for people all the time, but when he, like, he really shines when he's allowed to do a whole project with someone. Another really good example of this is actually Apollo Brown. Um, last year he dropped, was last year? It might have been the year before, 
but um, he dropped two projects, one with Joel Ortiz and one with Locksmith. And prior to that, I mean, I, I hadn't really heard of Locksmith until then, but that album was super consistent all the way through. So I was really excited for Locksmith's solo album later that year. And to me, the biggest turnoff to that album was the inconsistencies in the beats. And how it kind of felt like he had the rhymes already written before the beats were there. And that might be the case. I don't know how he does his thing. But I feel like that project with with Apollo Brown was so much better because it was so consistent. And it allowed... Like, I don't know if Apollo Brown's like, I want you to rap like this on this track, or I want you to, like, he had a whole concept to the project. But whatever sort of thought process and, like, collaboration went into it really provided a much better project, honestly. Um, And same with the Joel Ortiz album. I mean, recently Joel's been doing a lot better, uh, for me at least, but prior was kind of hit and miss. So, like, when I heard Mona Lisa, I'm like, oh, yeah, no, this is pretty solid all the way through. Um, And that's really kind of why I started listening to him again. I kind of fell off after Slaughterhouse disbanded. Um, But then you, so, you know, those are two pretty solid examples recently that I was just so amazed with their collaborative project that, like, when they go off and do solo things with other producers or multiple producers it's just not the same um another one i really want to talk about was static select and bun b um they dropped that collab project trill static and that one was a little bit different still because that was done i believe in one night and it was a live stream and he just had kind of like a rotating door of rappers come through. I mean, Static Selected was going to keep his um, production pretty consistent regardless. But it's it was different because it was such a collaborative project. Like, it wasn't just Bun B and Static Selected. It was Bun B, Static Selected, Method Man, Fat Joe. Um, I'm, I know there are others. I just can't remember right now. But you had so many different people coming through that they're all working together. And, I mean, that also kind of goes into when rappers do collab projects with another rapper. It's so much better when they're in the same room together. Because, I mean, you'll get a lot of times where you can tell that they weren't in the same room. And you're like, oh, that's not... Yeah, he just sent that beat or that verse in and it wasn't, you know... It was kind of dry. Um, And that's kind of what I was talking about on my Alfredo review. When he had uh, Benny and Conway and Tyler just kind of do whatever they wanted. But they kind of kept the same style that Freddie was doing already on the track. Um, But yeah, like... You have just so many examples of where it's just great. (laughs) Um, Now one... One huge example, really, and it's only because they've been going on for so long, is Atmosphere. Atmosphere is not just a rapper. It's not just Slug. Like, everyone just thinks it's Slug because he's always in the foreground. No, it is Slug and Ant. Ant is the producer, and they've been working together for basically 25 years at this point. And... Like, when you work with someone for so long, you begin to really understand them. So, although I haven't been super big on their recent albums, they're still really good projects because there's consistency through the album. Ant knows how Slug raps, and Slug knows Ant's production. Even when they try to do... A slightly different sort of style it still works really well because they're working so closely together like i mean like i said you have when you're working with someone for 25 years <laughs> you get to know them really well and you know like 
just like that that's just a really good example of it because rarely does slug work with other producers and whenever that is the case it's on a feature it's never on his own album or an atmosphere album because slug has never released a slug album <laughs> uh, but yeah no they Ant just knows what to expect from slug so he kind of gives him beats to do what he does you do also get sometimes where a track says featuring atmosphere. A lot of times those are just featuring Slug. But sometimes it's featuring both of them and Ant actually does a production on it. And that's exciting. Uh, I'll just run through a couple of other examples now just because they're fairly large. Um, one of the bigger ones being Gangstar. Guru and Primo, like, they're a really well-known collab group. Uh, Eric B and Rakim, same thing. <laughs> Rakim, the rapper, and Eric B, the producer. Um, even if you want to go out to, like, Blackstar. I mean, you have Talib Quali and Most Def rapping, and then High Tech on production. Now, I kind of alluded to this earlier, but... You can still get good production on albums that don't only feature one producer. A lot of times this does mean that there is one producer for the most part, but the artists know what to do when they're <laughs> looking for beats. So one example is Drake and 40. They've been working together for a while now too. and. Drake, Drake, I feel like can do, can get away with using more producers easily, but his most, the, the most consistent string of tracks on an album, because I've never liked a full Drake album, is usually when the production is fairly similar or like, it's consistent. I'm going to say consistent a lot. <laughs> um... The consistency with Drake and 40, I mean, it's there. You know you know what it is. But Drake also has a good ear for beats. Like, he can work with other producers and find other beats that will fit him well. Uh, the same thing goes for Griselda. They often work with Derringer, and that's kind of what's expected nowadays. But they also work with other producers. Um... There are, there are other producers that they work with often, but I just can't remember their names right now. But they also work with Alchemist. They work with, um, I mean, shit, West Side Gun just worked with Tyler recently. Um, Alchemist, I mean, Mad Lib. Like, so they, they do a really good job of making sure whatever project they're working on stays consistent. And I think that's a lot to do with West Side Gun, because he's kind of the A and R for all of Griselda. Like, Pray for Paris was a super consistent album all the way through, even though I don't think any producer was on there more than once. Um, the same thing goes for What Was Sheen Gun Do, the per Griselda project that dropped last year. That was consistent because I'm gonna I'm gonna say West Side Gun did it. And it's because West High Gun was the one picking the beats. He put the whole album together. I'm sure there's multiple tracks out there that were made during that time. But they didn't make the cut because they didn't fit the album. So, yes, it does matter a lot when or to have a producer and a rapper work together on a whole album because of consistency, but it also does rely pretty heavily on the a and um, like, like with West Side Gun. <laughs> now, I've talked a lot about rappers and producers working together, but another thing fairly related to this is rappers that also produce. 
Now, the biggest ones to me are Big Crit and J. Cole. Um, also, more recently, Code of the Friend and... Yeah, I'm drawing a blank on everything else. But, oh, Russ. But I don't really listen to Russ, so I can't say much about him. But you have, like, who who knows your rap style better than yourself? Big Crit, up until Crit is here, produced the majority of his albums. And if I'm, if I'm speaking bluntly... Crit is here is probably his worst album. And that's because of the issue I was talking about earlier. He got a bunch of producers and just didn't really make the album flow. And I feel like sometimes artists are kind of pressured into using a particular producer on their album. Like, say you get um, Beethoven to produce a track for you. Are you really going to let that track sit? No, you're going to you're going to make sure that's on the album. Even if it doesn't fit the album, you're going to make sure it's there. Like and I get it, but sometimes that messes up the consistency of the album. Um like I was mentioning Big Crit had been had been producing his own beats for a long time. And I mean, the only times that he really veered away from that was when he works with Ninth Wonder. And that still works well because Crit and Ninth Wonder have a very similar production sound. Um, at least for, as far as what's in their comfort zone. Obviously Ninth Wonder, I feel, is a bit more versatile because he's a bigger producer. But they work well together. Um, and... Yeah, I mean, you the only person that knows you well is yourself. So, Crit making his own beats for the longest time made a lot of sense. Because he knows what sort of beats he wants to rap on and how he's going to sound on it. And that also goes back into the producers know like kind of having an idea of what sort of um sort of rappings they want on this track. Because that's part of the production. Um, J. Cole hasn't really done that as much. He has worked with other producers, but it's all in-house. So it's not quite the same. Um, but spe- like going to Code of the Friend, um, his last album, everything was pretty much produced only by him. I mean, he had a hand in every track. So you have him making an album that he really wants to make and that (laughs) that's hard to come by sometimes um obviously russ makes his own beats and i don't know russ well enough to speak on it but same deal like he knows what he's doing or he knows how he wants to sound oh my god but to wrap things up I think, for me, having a rapper and producer collaborate on albums makes for some of my favorite projects. I mean, this year alone, some of my favorite projects are going to be Alfredo, Run the Jewels 4, um, Lulu. Like, those, just those three alone are in my top five. And those also happen to be albums that rappers worked with a single producer throughout. And I get that like those don't always sell the best too. Because obviously you want to have bangers on your album. And maybe that's why mainstream artists or bigger artists don't always do that. Like you won't see... You'll never see Drake doing a whole album with one producer anymore. Like, he's he's too big for that. Like, you won't see... Well, you might see Kendrick do that. Kendrick might do that. And J. Cole does get away with that, too. Because, I mean, he has a in-house production staff. <laughs> but, 
But, like, big artists are rarely going to do that. Like, they're going to make, they're going to get a variety of production because they want different sounds on the album. And they know that to get radio play, you got to have a song that's a radio song. And I mean, if you're doing a single production style, it's not going to, it's going to be hard. And the other thing is that most bigger artists aren't always doing like a concept album or trying to make an album that's super focused. Like smaller artists, I mean, not like super underground, like anything below like the top artists. They're going to want to make a more focused album often because that's what a lot of their fan base wants. All in all, I mean, I just I just like consistency. <laughs> that's the word of this podcast, I guess. <sighs> Anyways, that's about all I got. Um, let me know in the comments below what are some of your favorite collaborative projects in recent years. Um, I know I just kind of rambled on. I was originally going to talk about how the music industry kind of screws over their artists. Um, but that's a much deeper topic that I want to do more research on. And this rapper producer conversation is something that I've been wanting to have for a while anyways. Anyways, um, also remember to like and subscribe if you want to see more content like this and stay tuned for my run the jewels for review on friday also remember to donate and sign as many petitions as you can because we need whatever change we can make happen that's it stay safe out there and thank you for watching or listening <laughs>